He but, goes, dude, you know we have the same audience, right? And I go, no, we <laughs> don't. No, we don't. He op- he was he talked about his cruise, his his Burt cruise, and he was like the cruise. I go, I go. Can I tell you something? He goes, don't worry. I already told them not to send you an offer. I go. You could send me the gross of the cruise, the entire cruise, yes. and I would turn it down. I mean, I love it. Yeah. My favorite part, I'm sorry, of the last few minutes, though, yeah. is that you've very kind of like diplomatically said, Bert's a f***ing No, that, I'm not. No, 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 it kind of, yeah, it kind of, it kind of no. is. That. You no. changed and you started doing like, hey, when Skinny Tom showed up. Do you remember when you were fat when we did this show? <laughs> yeah. Hey, guys, bring back Fat Tom. Uh, do you know how often I hear that hashtag bring back he was so much more fun do you know what fat tom didn't do call you pores because <laughs> he didn't change out his outfits at all they just got bigger and bigger i think that's not true i think i had disdain for them <laughs> at fat every tom size was so much fun let's reminisce about fat tom so for the past week or so we have been covering two bears one cave and i think it's very clear at this point that both Tom and Bert's uh, business relationship and friendship has officially peaked and it's probably not getting better from now on because from the start, the whole show was built around their friendship and it was funny. It was legit. They went through some pretty interesting things like the weight loss challenges and then started gifting each other insane gifts like uh, expensive race cars and expensive antiques that were pretty funny. But now since they rarely do any episodes together and they've had some pretty big disagreements and most recently, Tom Segura was essentially trashing Burt Kreischer's comedy and explaining how much he hates being around drunk people on his own podcast, which was pretty wild. And because of all that, I thought it was uh, the perfect time to revisit their one-sided friendship, which I wonder how much longer it will continue. I love Burt. You know, Burt was doing that tour last year. Yeah. And they said, Burt wants you to come and do a couple of guest spots on the tour. Yeah. And my manager, my agent, they both like, Burt wants you to come. These are great tours. I go, I'm not going to do Burt's. Look. Here's the thing about comedy. I love Bert. Yeah. But I'm yeah. saying, it's like anything else. Not everybody has the same audience. No, they don't. You know what they I mean? Don't. That's yes. just, nobody even thinks about this. Like, no. hey, you're exposed to a different audience. Yeah, an audience is going to be like, first of all, they probably have a vague idea who I am. They're not interested. I'm not into Everybody go their way, separate way. You know what I mean? <laughs> so when yeah. you see Bert, yeah. tell him thank you. Stop making offers. It's, I'm not gonna be saying no the rest of my life. <laughs> By the way, just so you know, I have rejected everything he's ever his. his, his and then he'll be like, bad. he goes, bad. "Dude, you know we have the same audience, right?" And I go, "No, we <laughs> don't. No, we don't." He op- he was he talked about his cruise, his his Burt cruise, and he was like, "The cruise." I go, I go, "Can I tell you something?" He goes, "Don't worry. I already told them not to send you an offer." I go. You could send me the gross of the cruise, the entire cruise, yes. and I would turn it down. I mean, I love it. Yeah. Now, Colin is 100% correct here when it comes to Burt Kreischer and him having completely different audiences and different type of uh, comedy that they do. And we actually covered this on our last video, but Burt Kreischer is 100% out of touch when it comes to inviting people to open for him at his fully loaded tour, because just on video, he's invited Bobby Lee, Kevin Smith, and Louis C.K., which was pretty wild and funny to uh, witness. However, when it comes to Tom Segura, to say that they have completely different audiences, it's insane. I mean, just by nature of their podcast, their massive podcast, they literally have the same audience. But even if we put that aside and we uh, talk about their comedy, their actual comedy, sure, you could argue that Tom Segura is way better than Burt Kreischer when it comes to stand-up comedy in terms of bits and edgy punchlines and all of that and being funnier overall however when it comes to their audience they do have similar people that watch them which all of them end up being joe rogan fans at the end of the day i love it but it's just there's different things going on there you know what i mean <laughs> yeah that's a nice way of saying yeah, it yeah but i'm there just are saying different things going yeah. on there and it's yeah. like <laughs> it's just everyone's got their you know everybody's got this idea yeah that like all comedy is I know. An audience. My favorite part, I'm sorry, of the last few minutes, though, yeah. is that you've very kind of like diplomatically said, Bert's a f***ing No, that, I'm not. No, no, it kind of, yeah, it kind of, it kind of no. is that. There right. are times when you've done stand-up long enough where you get an offer for something, and it's like, I'm not shaking my head at the money, no. but you go, is this, is the exchange of this money worth what I know this experience will be? Yeah. And then you go, like, these are not equal. And a lot of people try to argue that Tom Segura essentially blew up after his uh, Netflix special came out in 2014. 
and not because of Joe Rogan, therefore making him one of the few comics that didn't come from the Rogan sphere, which is 100% not what happened. Joe Rogan himself explained on the eighth episode of the Joe Rogan Experience how he met Tom Segura uh, and had him open for him while he was on tour because he thought he was very funny. Tom Segura, hilarious stand-up comedian, if you haven't seen him before. Tom and I met when, when I was first doing the uh, Maxim tour with Charlie Murphy and John Heffron. We did this tour, and everywhere we had a different guy open up for us, and a couple other places. But Tom was the funniest out of all of them. He was the funniest. When we were in Phoenix and he went up, he's fucking hilarious. I was like, God damn, this dude's really funny. Like, this is some funny shit. It was like, it was mean-spirited, but smart, and oh, very good stuff, man. And so we've been pals. Thanks, man. Ever since. Tom Segura, very talented comedian. It's just, you know, for co comedians, there's a lot of comedians that are really funny, but you don't know who they are. Tom Segura was then one of the first comics to appear on the Joe Rogan Experience and continue to appear time and time again. He also started his own podcast around the same time. And then in 2014, landed that Netflix special. But yeah, literally the definition of getting discovered and brought up by Joe Rogan himself directly. And keep in mind that back then in 2014, Netflix was giving out specials to people like Bill Burr. So it's not like Netflix found Tom Segura at a random open mic and then gave him a special and had him blow up. Of course not. Tom Segura at that point was already an established comic, was pretty big selling tickets, and then landed that comedy special. Now, of course, he did get exposed to a whole different audience on Netflix, and because he was funny, he blew up even more. There was no doubt about that. But once again, Burt Kreischer is also on Netflix, and it's uh, recommended in the same category as Tom Segura, so... Um, to say that they have completely different audiences, I don't know if that's 100% true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I feel like all the years of like the the six, seven show club gigs has really made a disdain for alcoholics and like or like for drunk behavior. Yes, yes. Me, we're like, I hate them. I can be in a non-performance setting and when someone's drunk, I just I just start to go like, I just want to get the fuck out of here. You know, like that loud, obnoxious shit. Yeah. Because you perform to it and you realize there's like, there's almost no way to defeat it at a well, certain point. Well, even the Lauren Boebert thing the other day, as much as I respect. And look, there's no argument that Tom Segura has changed and it's not bad. It's not a bad thing. It's part of life, but it's only fair that we call it out because it does sound to me like uh, Tom Segura saying that they have different different audiences is simply an excuse to say to avoid saying that he is way too big for Burt Kreischer or that he simply doesn't want to hang out with him outside of the podcast setting or, or a business event, which is completely understandable. And I've mentioned this before. I don't blame uh, Tom Segura for not wanting to party with Burt Kreischer, and uh, especially because he is essentially the opposite type of person as Burt. However, hearing Tom Segura talk about how he hates being around drunk people is pretty weird. It would be like if Andrew Santino on an episode without Bobby Lee started talking about how much he hates old guys that play video games and don't want to have a family or, or have kids. It would be unnecessary and you would question their friendship, of course. So that made me want to look back at the time that Tom Segura surprised Burt Kreischer at his movie premiere, which even though it happened almost five months ago, back when it happened, it didn't seem like that, that big of a deal. But now looking back, it does make Tom Segura seem a little bit uh, like a bad friend, which now makes a lot of sense by the way if you haven't done so already make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel it helps out so much and i really appreciate it thank you and, and let's let's just get to the real meat of this me surprising you at the premiere dude so that the for people that don't know for people that don't know i gotta also say something that i thought about a lot what there really is a difference and this goes for like all people in in different relationships is that there are things that are important to some like one person in a relationship that's yeah. not important to the other person. And sometimes you have to like, like what I mean is I am not a have a birthday party guy. I'm not like, uh, I'm not like. Your wife and I were just talking about this outside. I'm not, really? I, we were just saying, and we started talking about you and I said, you know, and then we started talking about the premiere. Yeah. And I said, I was so, I was so silently hurt because I was like, was one, tell the story from the beginning. So. What I was trying to say is that there you come to realize that sometimes you go, well, since if this is not important to me, I don't mean your event. I mean, going to things like I've been invited to dozens, dozens of mm -hmm. premieres, after parties, events. And I have attended, I think, counting yours now, either two or three, because I have only attended for the person. I'm also I was telling somebody about as I get to the story. I go, the difference, I go, if if I had been my premiere, 
Bert would have been like, when's your premiere? And I said, two weeks ago. And you would go, what? I go, I don't, I just didn't bring it up. Yeah. Because, and I'm, I'm trying to say it not like, I'm not saying it's, I'm saying personality wise, I would just go, I would think that you wouldn't want to go. So I didn't even bring it up because I, I that's so just how I think. Listening to that again really makes you realize how delusional Tom Segura is because he is essentially telling Bert Kreischer the typical, I'm sorry that you feel that way because if Bert Kreischer was truly your best friend and you, you knew what type of person he was, it wouldn't have taken you 10 years to figure out that, hey, you and Bert Kreischer are not the same per type of person and Bert Kreischer actually likes parties and celebrating himself. Of course not. It's really not that complicated. And it sounds like Tom Segura was just essentially making up excuses to avoid saying what he really wanted to say, which was, I don't want to go to your movie premiere. Simple. And Tom Segura saying that if he had a movie premiere that nobody would ever know because he doesn't like that type of stuff is completely insane. I mean, Tom Segura is legit the, a walking vegan joke. Like one of those, like, how do you know someone's vegan? They'll tell you. How do you know Tom Segura is rich? He'll definitely tell you how do you know that he surprised his mom with a crazy helicopter ride and then flew with the uh, blue angels he'll show you and how do you know that he surprised burr kreischer at his movie premiere he will definitely show you on his instagram so that whole act about not caring about those type of things and not wanting attention is complete nonsense it doesn't make any sense i started texting you probably a couple weeks ago a couple a few weeks ago when you were in europe yeah and i texted you and joe first i said i have a private leaving austin on wednesday going into what you want you guys hop on joe texted right away i gotta protect my parks with ari and yeah and shane and, and mark i can't do it i got shows that night i appreciate it good luck and then you didn't reply and then i went okay send a text to you and christina hey i got a private leaving wednesday night no reply send a text to you hey man what is, what's going on with the premiere because in my head there was a number of things a number of things yeah number one is you know secret time we have business over there like we have we have business yeah, yeah, okay, over okay. there like and so i was like i was like i want to introduce you to everyone i want to make sure you know everyone i want yeah. everyone to you know yeah facetime with yeah. people and number two it's like i remember saying to someone i remember saying on a uh, radio show they're like so is tom coming you're like I, I go i don't know and they go wait what and i said what do you mean and then i go i don't know i haven't heard from but, him. but okay but to give it full like full story okay full story full story i was in europe and I'm not, this is not a good thing, no. but I was there for 40 days. I think I probably saw one of your early texts and was like, I, I got to try to make arrangements for this. Yeah. And then when like I got home, I have a wife that's not thrilled that I've been gone for 40 yeah. days. My kids are young kids. They're yeah. not teenagers. They're young kids. I was like, I don't, you know, bringing it up. I was even like, you know, Hey, I'm going to, it's like, no, you just got home. So yeah. at first it really was just like, and I honestly, I've, like, been I gotta curious, tell you I've been curious what the breakdown of this was. Okay. I honestly I'm thought curious to, when, to know when, when I told you, you folded, that, when I told you that, yeah. when I told you that, I really thought, cause I, I think people with parents with kids think this way. I thought you were just like, Oh yeah, I totally get it. No problem. Okay. And I, now obviously Tom Segura isn't completely in the wrong here. I mean, I would also be upset if my coworker expected me to go to a celebration or some sort of event, but I mean, they claim to be best friends. So that's the standard that we're holding them up to at this moment. And look, even though I wasn't excited about the movie or the biggest fan of the machine movie, Tom Segura being at the movie premiere is was definitely a massive thing for Burt Kreischer. Because of that, Tom Segura being at the movie premiere was massive for Burt, both in terms of, you know, being a good friend and in terms of business. Because you could argue that a majority of fans of Two Bears, One K fans heavily lean towards liking Tom Segura more so having his stamp of approval, his uh, co-sign that, uh, that he thought the movie was a good project and encouraged people to go watch, it could have definitely helped out and pushed more people to give it a chance. Obviously, I'm not saying that Tom Segura alone would have saved the movie, but it's kind of like how Joe Rogan introduced or opened for, um, for Brendan Schaub when he recorded You'd Be Surprised. A lot of people were there. I'm sure a lot of people were there just to see Joe Rogan in person and uh, to be able to support him supporting brendan schaub it wasn't like all of them were there to see a master class in comedy when you said it to me the first time i said I, I i really meant it totally get it no worries yeah totally get it no worries and then uh and then i did press two things of press and it came up and i, and I was like he's not coming and both of them were like what what the <laughs> what, what's happening and i was like I was like, I don't know, he's, you know, he just got off tour from Europe. He just got home. And they're like, he can't fly out for the day. And, I was, and like, people would make it, people would almost convince me that I should get heard about it. Well, I understand and so then that. It's, and so it built. Well, and then, and then I, I, I said it at dinner with a bunch of people. 
And they're like, Tom's not coming. And I was like, and mean, but meanwhile, meanwhile, as you're sa- as as you're saying that, I'm really just like, we talked about it, and yeah. you're like, no worries. And I just take you, I take it as. At I, that. I was good. And then it started building. And then Leanne found out. Leanne found out and, and texted. Lost her shit. She lost her shit. And I said, hey. Uh, she goes, is Tom coming? And I said, no, he's not going to make it. He just got home from Europe. Like, I was good with it. And then Leanne sent you a text. She sent me a text. You and Christina a text. Together. And, said, and did not include you- me on it and did not tell me about it. And she goes, are you guys really not coming to the premiere? And I was like. I mean, I thought we, I thought we, had, this was, you know, worked I, I out. Th- I, I, I was like, and so now mind you, I've had three builds up. So people yeah. like getting in my head <laughs> so here's the thing. and then Leanne sends the text and then you text me, keep going. The text was even worse. It's well, not- she goes, she goes, are you really not coming? We're like, well, no, yeah, no, she's saying, she's saying, she's saying it, she's saying it to the two of us, by the way. Hang on. Let, let's be very clear. You guys didn't reply because she said, I never got a reply from them. We replied. No, no maybe yes. privately to her. To her. Really? Yes. Okay. We replied to that text. And look, once again, when this first happened, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. And I understood Tom's perspective more than Bert's at that point, because I don't think anybody was more excited about that movie than Bert Kreischer himself, obviously. However, once again, since they are best friends and they have built a massively successful business, which is on, you know, it lives on the YMH Studios YouTube page, which is, you know, a huge project one of the biggest projects in that page and keeping it afloat obviously they have ymh podcast and whatever but because of that why wouldn't tom segura be able to attend a simple premiere which is very easy it's not like he's putting on a show or anything like that simply showing up to watch a movie and watch Bert Kreischer go crazy and it does sound like all of it could have been avoided if tom segura would have simply told uh, Bert that he wasn't going to the premiere from the start because Bird invited Joe Rogan. Obviously, Joe Rogan declined, said that he had a podcast to do, but Tom Segura didn't reply and just kind of ghosted him, which is pretty messed up and interesting because a few months later, Tom and Bird would have a huge disagreement or a fight about Bert Kreischer not responding messages. So it's not okay when Bert Kreischer does it, but when Tom Segura does it, there was uh, there's always an excuse to why it happened. Now, Burke Kreischer's wife calling them is pretty legit. Once again, before I thought that she was kind of going over the line by essentially pressuring Tom Segura to, to attend the premiere, but it, she does have a point. I mean, if she can't talk to them like they're the like they are best friends, then they're not best friends, which is the point of this video. I I don't think they are, and instead, I've mentioned this before, <laughs> they're more like very good uh, business partners. Yes. Oh, so. so so you said, man, I got a pretty heavy text from I Leanne. I got a heavy text from Leanne. I'm I try call to make- Leanne. I'm like, what the fuck did you do? And she goes, "Her." this was her reply. They're our friends. I'm going to speak to them like they're our friends. This isn't business. They're our friends. If I can't speak to them the way I want to speak to them, yeah. then they, we ain't friends no more. Yeah. And I said, I said, well, baby, but you got to understand. She goes, no, I, I don't need to understand. Shit. I don't need to understand. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna talk Tommy the way I want to talk Tommy. I'm going to talk to Christina the way I'm going to talk to Christina because I would hope that they would talk to me like that and respect our friendship. <laughs> Sounds like you're doing an impression of someone you have locked up in the backyard. <laughs> Fucking, that's who I feel like I live with sometimes. So I, uh, and so I go, babe, I go, I'd already talked to him. She goes, no, no, let him reply. Let him reply. So and then okay. and I'm, I pull Rogan aside and I'm like, something's going on with Tom. I go, I can't tell I, something's going on. I, I'm like really broken up. And I'm like, and he goes, he go to the premiere, and I went no. And he went what? And I was, he's not going either. Yeah, but he's but me and you were different than me and him. Yeah, okay. And Bert Kreischer does have a pretty good point there. I mean, it does sound believable that he was okay with Tom not going to the premiere. It's not that big of a deal at the end of the day. But <laughs> then going to different shows and even having Joe Rogan question that uh, Tom Segura is not going to the event does make you think twice and start getting into your own head. I'm sure that happened to Tom Seg- to Bert Kreischer. And it's fair. Once again, they're technically best friends, uh, huge business partners. So it's not that crazy to expect that your best friend would go to that premiere. Now, the funny thing about this whole thing is that at some point when Tom Segura found out that he was going to make it to Bert Kreischer's premiere, he could have given Bert Kreischer a heads up and let him know. That way, Bert Kreischer could have maybe done some promo, invited more people, and then Tom could have showed up and helped 
make the event a lot bigger. But instead of telling him, he decided to record uh, his entire trip in a Logan Paul style vlog, which essentially showed a case how good of a friend he was because he was putting himself through a commercial flight with uh, a lot of loud babies and uh, poor people. By the way, it's not like he was, it's not like he had a $500 pair of headphones with noise cancellation, but he was still miserable in the airplane with all the noise. The, the regular folks, the lowest Just of the lowest. lowest. I just want you to ever forget this, dude. You flew on Southwest. That was the whole flight. Hopefully you'll be surprised. I'll tell you this, this flight was a nice surprise. That's great. Uh, you do? How would you describe them? Funny. funny. Physically, would you describe them funny too? Funny. Funny. Nah, that's super diplomatic of you. Not the guy I'm used to driving with. He then surprised and blessed Bird Crusher with his presence and uploaded it to Instagram and got 1.8 or 1.5 million views, which, to be fair, you could argue that it was a promo for the machine. He gave him a shout out and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, Tom Segura managed to make it about himself and how how good of a person he was for going through all of that to surprise Burt Kreischer, which it wasn't even the plan in the first place. He just didn't want to go to the premiere. He didn't care and then was guilted into going last minute. It kind of gave me a similar vibe to that one time that him and Joe Rogan did uh, Kill Tony's, I think, 10th anniversary episode. And they were essentially quiet the entire time, whispering to each other and just left uh, Tony out there by himself that was pretty intense and i think it just shows you how tom segura thinks he's way bigger than everybody else including his own best friend and co-host burke kreischer and then and tony hinchcliffe as well i could be wrong but that is what i've been gathering from the last few episodes that i've seen from two bears one cave and their uh, different appearances on other people's podcasts but let me know what you think in the comments below leave a like and subscribe to support the channel dislike if you didn't like the video but that is all we have for today see ya